we go. All right, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today, or good afternoon in the case of our guests. Um, uh, we're here uh, for Senior Tech Coffee, and our guest today is Avi Rossman from Nucleus Care. We're gonna be talking about uh, his product for communicating, uh, for older adults to communicate with their family uh, and uh, caregivers. Um, Prime of Life Tech is your sponsor for Senior Tech Coffee. And um, we do all the things that you see listed here. Uh, I have over 30 years of IT experience. It can help with computers, mobile devices, and smart home technology, as well as other things. Um, so I'm going to um, quit sharing, and we're going to uh, kick it off here with uh, uh, Mr. Avi Rossman. Thank you again for joining us today. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time. Thank you, Patrick, for having me. It's, it's an honor, and uh, I'm excited to to meet with you. Excellent, excellent. Um, so um, if, you, if you wouldn't mind, just give us a, a quick rundown of, of what is Nucleus Care and what kind of uh, service your product provides to the older adult community. Absolutely, so Nucleus Care is designed to help those who aren't comfortable with typical smartphones and tablets access those types of technology and resources. Uh, we saw, you know, even pre-COVID, there's been a push to get a seniors connected. Um, the way I try to describe it is, um, and I, I have an iPhone. I don't know if you have an iPhone or an Android. They push a new update. And for me in my 40s, all right, so, you know, it takes me a couple days till I'm comfortable, slide, swipe, touch, double tap, and, you know, I get it. It takes my kids about 10 minutes. My folks are in their 70s. It takes them about two hours on the phone with my kids in order to get it. Uh, my grandmother is 90. She did have an iPhone about eight years ago. And the only way she can use an iPhone now is if someone says, here, grandma, talk, because she can no longer, you know, she's getting a little older and learning the new technology has become challenging for her. I don't really wanna assign a particular age to it because different people are at sure. different levels. And I remember 10 years ago, uh, she was at my house playing with the stocks on a computer at age 80, and I thought it was fantastic. But as she's aged and she, you know, she's not as capable as she was, she does have relatives worldwide. And we gave her a nucleus, we gave her a good deal on a nucleus tablet uh, for grandma. And her, you know, her relatives, her loved ones are able to communicate with her. We're blessed to be living really close by to her. Um, but she has a lot of great grandchildren who are around the country, uh, some overseas, and they're able to use the platform for that purpose. So, so this is your mom we're talking about, right? My, my, it's actually my wife's grandmother, but I call her grandmother. You're, okay, your, your wife's grandmother. Thanks, thanks for clarifying. So she's communicating with people all over the world using your product. Is that right? Yes, using our platform, she's uh, able to communicate uh, and, and many people are, we have um, one individual, I mean, again, we don't, we don't peer in, we can't see one of the things we're not big tech, we can't see who's calling who, all I can know is that Patrick called Avi for this amount of time, we can't hear the calls, you're not going to suddenly get ads on your social media platform saying, hey, maybe you're interested in a new patio set, because you know, I searched, um, it was a funny story. A, a friend of mine, um, his wife was a little concerned about the COVID vaccine and how there were some stories about male fertility. And I found the proper medical article and I sent it to him. I'm not going to get on a vaccine discussion, but for the next three days, my Instagram and Facebook feed was all about male fertility. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because, because I googled the one article yeah. and you know but being in a closed circle like that we're really able to um, ensure people's privacy we are able to see call logs and metadata to see how it's being used and most of our customers are enterprise customers where we we basically divide them in different verticals we have seniors <laughs> aging at home seniors aging in a congregate care facility um, our other verticals are hospitals, which often involve seniors, and then a separate vertical would be what we call IDD uh, for people with developmental disabilities. So that th those are the spaces that we play in right now. Understood. And besides just having the ability to easily either initiate or, 
or receive a video call, tell me what else that your product is capable of doing. I under, as I understand it, you can collect data from different types of uh, connected medical devices. Correct. So we do have the ability to collect biometric data, which our enterprise clients are very much interested in getting that data. Uh, there are reimbursements available for collecting those data points. Um, we do have the ability to do remote patient monitoring. Uh, we're speaking to a hospital right now. Uh, if someone's on a one-to-one -one simply because of a fall risk, uh, that means that one person is sitting in that room. They're able to then use our platform to have, you know, to be that, and that that's actually billable if someone's a determined fall risk for the hospital. And I really hate to bring it back to the bottom line, but that's what it ends up being is how people are sure. going to pay for these things. And they said it's compliant for one person to be looking at six different, um, six or eight different rooms while the person suffering from dementia they might think they forget that they had a fault you know that they don't have the ability to walk on their own and if they see jack in room 1275 starting to get up they can just go ahead and press one say jack hang on a second we're going to have someone help you and hospitals have huge liabilities if someone breaks a hip um while they're recovering from a cardiac surgery and they're you know some, something of that nature and people who end up falling who are elderly, unfortunately, their lifespan, if, if you break a hip in your 80s or 90s, your lifespan is statistically uh, cut short. As for fun, I volunteer as an EMT. So that's where my medical knowledge comes from. It's, it's a weird thing. Every, everyone has their outlet. I became a volunteer EMT 25 years ago, and um, I still do it to the extent that I'm able to, as long as I'm physically able to, uh, to do so. That's a that's a great volunteer job to have. Uh, I'm sure your community really appreciates that. Yeah, the radio is off right now. We're not going out for the next hour. I'm not available. Okay, gotcha. Excellent. Uh, so what? Um, so in the, well, I want to go back to the example you were just giving about um, uh, basically uh, acute care monitoring, uh, either in a community setting or for an individual. Um, could you go a little bit more into the details about how that works? Is this like, is the is it a camera on continuously situation or are we talking about other devices feeding data to your, um, to one of your units? Um, could you just elaborate please? Sure. So the camera is not, it's not a surveillance device, although it can be used so, but the end user um, will see somebody looking in. So we're not trying to, I see. you know, our, our mission is to empower those who are aging. It's very, it's, dehum it's dehumanizing to be told that you can no longer, you know, pick up on your own. You know, when you tell someone they can't drive anymore, you're taking away a freedom. This is a grown adult who's been independent. And thankfully my parents are still healthy, my mom still doesn't like driving. My dad likes driving, but they live overseas. When they come back, we, you know, from Israel, that's where they live. I say, listen, you, you really, you, you shouldn't be uh, driving when you're jet lag and you're in your seventies. And my dad fought me a little bit on it. We were going to a family wedding. That's why they came back. And three minutes after we left the wedding, they, he was sleeping in the car. Um, and it's, you know, it's one of those things where slowly, um, and I saw this with my late grandparents, where you, when you take away that control, it, it's, it's a little dehumanizing and you want to offer them independence. So what this does is it allows them the independence. And when I, when I showcase the, the platform to, your, to you and the audience, I think you'll get a better understanding of what we're doing. And I'm happy to dive in or if you want some more questions first, because sometimes it's, you'll organically get some answers to your questions as we, uh, as we speak. Please take it away. Okay, so one of the um, one of the hardest things is to get individuals to adopt using technology altogether. They they haven't used technology, and one very simple thing this is like a ten year old idea is the digital photo frame. So when our device goes to sleep, pictures show up. 
The pictures are uploaded by the family app. Um, the avatar that you see up there is, that one is of me, that shows that, okay, I put that picture up there. That's where it came from. So the elderly person using the device will know which one of their loved ones sent that photograph. Um, what I'm doing now, just for the sake of your audience, is I'm mirroring the device um, onto my screen because it's very hard for me to do it this way. But this is, it's a, there, there's no wires. It's a touch screen tablet, either on this particular device or on a Samsung or an iPad. The, the hardware concerns will, you know, are, are endless, uh, the, the possibility. So we can go ahead and we can see, you know, these are photos that I've uploaded. And frankly, it keeps them on my desk because it's, it's of interest to me. This is my family. I, I'm not here to show you how, you know, lovely my family is, but I, I think they're pretty lovely. I'm, um, so here, my son is studying overseas uh, in Jerusalem for the year as a gap year for his freshman year of college. So these are photos that he uploaded. Um, and I specifically asked him to do this so you can see the avatar changes. So his grandmother would see, okay, these are pictures of what he did today. And that's, and it's something, what we noticed is the use of the devices skyrocketed once we added this feature because all of a sudden it's something that you want to keep. And if the family is going ahead and regularly uploading photographs, and you can have many different family members uploading different pictures, it keeps the end users, the elderly individuals engaged. Now, through the touch of a screen, no passwords needed, we're out. Um, we're out of that screen. And this is a, a test environment. Every button that you see here, and th this is the weather in New York, uh, you know, it is mostly cloudy. It was, I guess it's not drizzling anymore. Um, you can go ahead and if you were in a congregate care facility, this was, I think I had the setup from last week, I didn't change it. Um, but if we go into the, the bulletin board, um, I did a LinkedIn open forum last week, I had dinner uh, at a restaurant in the city and this was, but this is a schedule that, that the facility can go ahead and say, hey, what's going on today? You know, what are we doing? Urgent call may or may not uh, be put there depending on the facility. We have people over here saying, call concierge, call front desk, um, you know, call, you know, a specific, uh, they, they call the front desk something. Um, if the um, end users would like to reach out to their relatives, this is what they do. They go ahead and, if I go ahead and push this button, so my phone, which is on vibrate, is now vibrating with a call and I can connect it, we'll, we'll get a lot of feedback, so I won't, but it's an instant connection through data. Um, if I go ahead and, you know, if I call my son in Israel, he will pick up and, you know, uh, you won't be, it, it'll be interesting, but I, I don't know exactly where he is. It's at 7.15, I think he's in the cafeteria. <laughs> my daughter is in New York in school, so she's, uh, um, she won't pick up. My wife doesn't like if I uh, drop in on her in the middle of the day. Uh, so no these are, um, you mentioned the biometric. So over here, and I, I want to, you know, um, so it's scanning right now for, I don't have my Bluetooth device hooked up right now, but it's scanning for scale or for, um, or for the blood pressure. We are adding pulse ox became very popular during COVID and uh, blood glucose. So th those are the things that we're adding. I'll draw your attention right over here. Um, we're on the end user side. So we have high number, low number, and heart rate. We don't see systolic, diastolic. We're not using the medical terminology. So let's say, am I nervous now? No, I'll use my standard numbers. This is what I hope my numbers always are. Um, put them in, you know, and I'm using a mouse, but you can, I could reach over and use a touch screen. Um, click OK. Now, right away, I want you to see this little circle that's going. Um, uh, interesting that this is, even sometimes in live demos we have, um, okay, so normally what will happen is it'll say success, your response has been saved, um, but um, that did not happen in this case. Oh, there, there we go. Oh, it took a little second, um, and it just told me my device went offline. Um, but I see that it's back online. I come back out of the screen and we go ahead and um, the memory box, that's a dementia term. 
Um, some people will call it photo album, photo gallery. Uh, the logo here can be replaced with the logo of the um, institution that we're working with. So here is the back end system. So one of them, you know, and again, we can we have a lot of different features here. Um, one of in the assisted living, independent living, skilled nursing communities, the number one expense outside of salary is typically culinary. And mm -hmm. the number one complaint that people get is mom didn't like dinner. And people who are really interested in, you know, maintaining a high level of service, they want to, they're, they're sending this, 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 this food, they're spending all this money. They want then they want to get their money's worth. They want to make sure that they're getting something. And without giving people survey fatigue, we can go ahead and send a message to one person. And, you know, how was dinner last night? And you can go ahead, you could schedule this. It can go to the entire floor. It can go to the entire unit. Um, we'll do a feeling emojis here. Um, and you can go ahead and you can imagine sending this to 200 people. You can click the tick boxes. So you could be alerted if someone says bad or awful. Um, the, now, if you're on that low salt, low sodium, you know, sh low sugar diet, chances are you're going to shut bad and awful a lot. But the <laughs> data that they're getting, um, you know, is useful data. So we're going to go ahead and send this now. Um, confirm um, message saved. It does, it's not an instant message. It takes about a minute or so. I can usually get, uh, oh, wait, I thought I saw it for a second. How was dinner last night? And the message, or I clicked out of it for a second. So I, uh, you heard it, but you didn't get to see it. So let me see if I can send it again. Uh, no worries. So, but, but you get the idea how, you know, how was dinner last night? Let me just, uh, you know, so will you, a different message, you know, for people living at home, you know, we're out of snow season. I hope. Well, actually, not really this weekend, from what I hear. Shoveled by your house yet? Yeah. You know, if someone's doing a um, a home visit, and this is a home care setting, um, very simple. You know, was the snow shoveled yet by you? Um, so here on this side, we're sending the message, and let me go right back into the device without. Um, how was dinner last okay, night? Okay, so how was dinner came back because I didn't click the response. So I had a great dinner last night. So uh, success, your response have been saved, has been saved. Um, the reason that's important is we have a lot of end users who have dexterity issues. I don't have dexterity issues and I butt dial people a few times a day. So we want to make sure that we're not getting that double tap. Um, and the other message should come uh, we'll go back into my uh, into my photo album, but the other message should come pretty soon. Um, and you'll see that, you know, was the snow shovel, the thumbs up, thumbs down. So those are some of the, uh, if I leave it on this screen for a second, we should be able to get that message. It might take a moment. Was the snow shoveled by your was house yet? Was the snow shoveled by your house yet? So you, I don't know if you're able to hear the audio that came off the device. Yes. Um, very simple thumbs up, thumbs down. If the if you're if you're living and you're having home care come to you, um, you know again the same thing. Success, your response has been saved. Um, if you're having a home care agency uh, come to you, um, you'll go ahead and um, you'll see um, they can go ahead and say, hey, you know we have to get to this person. They can reach out to whichever municipality is this person you know has a doctor's appointment you know we need to get them out and they can go ahead um you spoke about the data and please interrupt me if you have questions so my perfect blood pressure um 421 uh this is obviously eastern time it's entered here it could be api'd out into whatever you need funny story about this one i added th these are all entered manually I did a presentation last week. It was set for 1 p.m. At 12.58, my computer crashed. Oh, jeez. Yes. And, um, you know, I had a colleague go on, join the Zoom, saying we're having some technical problems. That was that LinkedIn open forum. We lost some people because of it. And I'm, I didn't actually take my blood pressure. It was probably higher than that. 
Um, <laughs> if you scroll down later, last, you know, th this will be the uh, Bluetooth device that was connected. Okay. But what I want to, uh, you know, alert people to here, we'll just focus over here on the blood pressure. What we have, again, and now we're, we're seeing systolic diastolic because we're in the back end system now. We're assuming the medical acumen is there. So if Avi's blood pressure drops below 90 over 60, pulse below 50, or on the other side goes above 150, 90, pulse above 120, and that's recorded someplace, then the institution that's taking care of me, we're in a test environment right now, but the institution that's taking care of me can get an alert. Um, here's where we do get into HIPAA compliance. They're not going to get an alert that's saying, hey, Avi's blood pressure tank because SMS messages are not HIPAA compliant. Um, right. You get a message that says you have a red alert. Uh, please log in. Click here, log in, and they'll see. Um, you know, they'll see their alerts. Um, you know, we have a lot of unanswered alerts here because, again, we're in a test mess. We're in a test environment, but the um, that's very important, um, and that is HIPAA compliant. I, it's the same way. I, I mean, I bank. You know, my bank will send me. You know, very very important message, and their privacy terms were updated again you know, for the third time. So you really want to make sure that when you set these alerts, people read them. And if they're not done properly, if you're giving people too much noise, they will not respond to them. Um, Just a couple of quick questions. Sure. So, so with the alerts, they will, the, the care provider will receive a, uh, a text or an SMS message. Can they also receive it like say via an email or something like that? Yeah, all customizable, whether they want an email, a daily digest, whether they want a, um, you know, certain things that are like higher, you know, more important that they need to be escalated. They can preset that with our, with our uh, client success team to make sure that they're getting um, what they need. Uh, one of the things, if you look up over here, um, the, our devices are designed to always stay plugged in. They're not meant okay. to be taken around and be mobile. Um, so what you see here is the battery of them. And we have clients who, should the battery drop below 85%, um, they get an alert because that means someone unplugged it. That's what, that, that's what they decided. Should the device go offline for more than 15 minutes, they get an alert. Um, the red ones here, I've got several different devices. I'm, I'm just keeping one online for the presentation that's green. Um, should they, you know, I don't have alerts set up, otherwise they would always go off. But it's important to know that a device has been off for, you know, at one time they, they experimented at five minutes, they were getting too many alerts because Wi-Fi went down, router, routers rebooted, things of that nature. And there were, you know, they were getting too many packing peanuts and they couldn't identify the actual important alerts. So they said 15 minutes, if they're down for 15 minutes, you know, they thought sometimes um, they're doing remote patient monitoring for people who are living in the community we actually are the ones telling them that their Wi-Fi in these some of these smart homes went down because they get the alert that our device is offline, and then they, you know, and then they go ahead and they say, "Hey, the whole system's, the whole house is down," but we're the ones get, we're the ones telling them about it first. Interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, back to the uh, connected devices for a second, uh, like the Bluetooth. Uh, or I'm sorry, the blood pressure, uh, pulse ox, and so forth, and and the uh, and the scale. Is Bluetooth the um, uh, the connection protocol exclusively, or do you uh, does it work over regular Wi-Fi, or what? What are our options? Currently, it's BLE. It is Bluetooth, um, okay. or enter manually. Um, I, you know, different tech people will say different things. Um, you always have to have the option of entering data manually. Guidance came down that reimbursements will only work with Bluetooth, um, which to me is a real shame because first of all, they're trying to guide against people entering the wrong data. Well, you know, who's to say I didn't put the pulse oximeter on the AIDS hit finger instead of the end user's finger? They're, you know, it's, it's, not, sure. it's not a fingerprint. So, um, and Bluetooth in a congregate care facility, if you've ever tried to use it, um, there often is interference. Um, yeah. It's very hard to make it marry one device and it won't <clears throat> for any others, but 
it's like anything Bluetooth to me has not been perfected where, you know, if someone wants to update their blood pressure um, and they have a kit, you know, without a caregiver, um, it's important that they be able to enter the data manually. You can send a message um, in, in our messaging system. We can go and in the messaging system, you can send a biometric message um, and, you know, simply like this, that will tell the person to enter their blood sugar. Um, and that's something that they have to prompt on their own. In a sniff of the skilled nursing facilities, they're not typically going to replace their medical equipment with, um, with ours. This is not going to replace all the medical equipment that they have. It's, it's, it's simply not... It's simply not, you know, they, they have hospital grade equipment, um, but here, if, Enter your blood sugar. If, they, if someone gets this information and this is prompting them, you know, in an assisted living or in a non-skilled environment and they go ahead and they enter their sugar, um, I'm curious what the, um, there seems to be a little bit of a lag. Okay, success here, response has been saved. Again, no double clicks. Um, to me, prompting it and then putting it in now, can someone put in false information? Yeah. Can you stick somebody else and get their blood sugar instead? Yeah. I mean, at a certain point, there is, you know, there's a trust issue, you know, where you have to trust the people that they're giving you the accurate information and they're 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 bought into the system. Sure. Well, you're counting on the on the provider and the um, and the uh, the patient, as it were, to uh, to do the right thing. So right. um, we have a lot yeah. of stakeholders. We have the direct care workers, we have the administrators, we have the family members, and we have the end user of our platform all have to understand that this is something that we're doing to increase their, um, their independence. Now, we, we spoke about speaking about in, increasing independence. I don't think anyone's using the audio call right now. This is a video call, so I can go ahead and call in to the device that's sitting on my desk. I can't do it now because the camera's on Zoom. Sure. It had the auto answer or the silent auto answer. Now, this is when we get into that, you know, are we surveilling people? This can be customized at the, at the user level. So if someone is physically able to touch and accept the call, I would like to empower that person to say, you know, this it rings and they can accept the call. And it show it'll show my picture if I'm calling from the family app. Um, why don't I just do that from the app so you can see what it looks like? Um, I won't accept it, so we won't have too much interference. But let me sure. uh, let me show you what it um, what it looks like from the app. Uh, go back into so if I go into my if I go into my app right now and I get logged in here, um, I'm online, I, I go for a regular video call. So if someone's physically able to touch these buttons, I think we should empower them to do that. Absolutely. That's, you know, and I'm gonna decline it now. Now, if someone's not able to do that, um, if someone isn't able, they're, they're, we have, you know, people in the ICU, we were just, there was a new story last month about someone who was, you know, 76 days in the ICU, 45 of them intubated with COVID and they, the family used our device to sit with their loved ones. So I, I can do a, what we have is the silent drop-in button um, and you'll get some feedback now, but here I am sitting and I just dropped into the device without interacting with it. So if we go back over here to the um, to the back end portal, so here's where you have the video call, which was the first attempt I made, and then the auto answer. It could be a, a an auto answer that will ring, and a silent auto answer if you don't want to disturb somebody. But here you have to have buy-in from the family and the caregivers, and if the person using it is of sound mental status that they should also be bought in that this is something that's important for them and this is something that they want to do. Um, and we could disable these buttons 
as necessary, the the enterprise clients can go ahead and say, you know what, Avi's able to use his device. He's able. We're, we're, he doesn't want drop in. Um, this person, you know, another Jack isn't able to use it. They need drop in. So it's really on that granular level and that level of customization. Excellent. And I can definitely see situations where you would want to have that capability. You know, if you were if you were to initiate just the standard um, video call where the end user can interact with the uh, on-screen buttons. And if they don't pick up for some reason, you've tried a couple of times and now you're getting worried that, you know, maybe mom had a fall or something, uh, you know, you could pop in and just at least get the view from the perspective of the camera there on, on the end user side, uh, what's going on. Uh, in the environment there. So I can see that being really useful. And Patrick, you're, you're a thousand percent right. Even for non-skilled uh, providers, people who are home health aides who have used our devices to, to log in. Uh, it was about two years ago, someone logged in and called a woman and they said, you don't look right. Mrs. Smith, you don't look like, you don't look right to me. I'm calling 911. And that person was having a heart attack. Wow. And women um, are known, we're, we're trained in EMS, that men typically have the TV heart attack, the clutching of the <laughs> chest and the collapsing and all the, all the theatrics that go around with that. While women are, no, they could have that, but they're very known for having silent heart attacks where right. symptoms are, they're a little cold and clammy and they just, they just don't feel right. Something's not something's off, but you don't know what it is. Yeah. And that's, um, and that's a lifesaver because you can't do that. You don't get that empathetic view through a telephone. Um, a lot of the assisted livings still have those old intercoms where the wires are like this thick and you push the button, you get that crackly voice. You, you really can't offer much care that way. Um, you can calm someone down. You can de-escalate a situation uh, in a dementia patient uh, quite quickly when they're able to see a familiar voice. I, ha I have a relative um, who's actually not elderly, but is uh, an Alzheimer's patient. Um, and sometimes just having a face-to-face -face conversation can bring him back into reality when he, when he loses it, when he comes out. So that, that is something which, you know, the data proves that the social isolation that came out during COVID um, is, has been very harmful. There have been studies yeah. that we need, we need this. And I think that in a post COVID world, what we'll see is we're not replacing the human touch. We're not replacing human interaction. But if you drive around New York City, you see people, and thankfully, you know, my in-laws are able to take my grandmother to her doctor's appointments. But you see these accessoride vans all over the place taking people for 15-minute doctor visits. It's a four-hour experience in horrible weather, exposing them to other diseases, exposing them to the elements. They can spend those four hours at a day program. They can spend those four hours in many other places that are better than waiting, you know, waiting for a ride at the end. And you see them and it's set, you go to the doctor's office and you see they're waiting for their accessor ride for someone. And sometimes they're waiting up to an hour. You know, can you imagine how, how disempowering is it? You know, I go to the doctor, I walk in, I walk out. How, how dehumanizing is that to wait for an hour to be rolled, to be wheeled in when for a follow-up visit, you know, I had an operation. My follow-up visit was a was a e visit. I picked up my phone, and you know, the thing lasted ten minutes. And the doctor said, "You're doing great." I'm like, "Thank you very much." And that was the end of it. Um, yeah. The telehealth companies really want to, for lack of a better word, acquire these customers. Um, and you know, we're we're hoping to, you know, by the end of this year, we we have spoken to some of the telehealth providers and. We're hoping to help them use our platform as a vehicle to reach these people because it's so simple. We're, we're currently developing a system where it's not really in the elderly uh, vertical, but where classes can start automatically. Um, we're talking about classes for activities of daily living, laundry folding, uh, food prep, things of that nature in the DD world, 
where we can use our platform and they could have that interaction and they can feel like they're in a class. Remind we're on an eight inch, we might end up on a 10 inch screen. So you really can't have, a, you, know, you can't have a Zoom with a hundred people. Um, right. But uh, a small group, um, it's important to be able to offer that. Um, if you'd like, I could stop the screen share so we can. Sure. Uh, these unless, are just, you, unless you have more to show us. I, I think we got a good um, sense of what, uh, let me go back to the, um, control here um you know you could you could add specific notes uh, let's say on the resident so staff can add specific notes um they can you know they can change their bulletin board the queue um we don't have any calls and this is where it would come up for them you know staff uh administrators can say hey when john's on calls are being handled like this when jill's on it's taking a little while what's going on what's the issue um, you can assign certain staff, you know, make them on duty um, to certain residents. Um, if you see down here, um, if someone is red, that means they're offline. If someone is yellow, I'll probably be yellow because that means that I have several devices. I have a four, I have four devices, one's on, one's off. If someone is green, that means their device is on. So I have a few questions. Would you um, like to keep the share open or? Um, just in case you need to refer sure. back to something. Um, so can, uh, in a normal end user setting, can you have multiple devices in, in the home? Uh, often, um, there are some times where there's a bedroom device. There's a, there's okay. a, there's a, um, a you know, TV table device or a kitchen device that there all, there will often be two. Um, you might know, uh, you, you, you might know to only drop in in the one that's in the, in more of a public setting and, and not in the bedroom. It really depends right. on the situation. Try to think of the drop in as these are the people that have a, the people that have a key to the home that will be sure. able to walk in at any moment. You bet. Um, and <clears throat> you know, so you've, you've, um, you know, you've seen, I'm sure you've seen a lot of, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen a lot of things uh, as a volunteer EMT. Yes. Um, so taking your experience uh, with that and probably some of the cases that you may have seen with older adults, how is your product uh, helping in situations where a, an EMT might have to come to the house at some point? Is that, so, is that too vague that, a question? That, no, that's a great question. Um, Oftentimes when I'm at someone's house, um, I don't, I mean, first of all, I, I, it, it, it's a conflict of interest for me to sell to the patients that I'm helping. Well, sure. I, I, I put it, I frame it as if they had a nucleus device, what, what could be there? You know, so we don't keep a PHI on the device. So the medication list we wouldn't have there, but if they had this here, and I can touch this button and they're not able to communicate with me, but I can call their first relative that's listed and get them on the phone and find out their medical history. Um, that's key. The amount of people who we take to the hospital who don't have their proper lists of medications and patient medical history is enormous. I tell each patient, because in it being a community setting, we see the same patients over and over again. I tell them, please, you know, have a printed out list. One person has this gorgeous cursive, which is just a real pain to read. Have a printed out list, you know, medical history, medications, allergies, name, date of birth. And the patient says, but I can tell that to you. And I said, but there could be a situation where you're not able to talk to me. You might be having a stroke. You might be unconscious. And I'm here and we don't know this information. So that's something where we, you know, that's advice that I've given well before I was involved in nucleus care. And I said, we tell them all, always put it on your refrigerator. At that point, people at home, they're not worried about putting their med list on their fridge, typically. Um, and I, frankly, I tell them to do the same thing with the DNR. Because as an EMT, or if they have any advanced directive, there's as an EMT, there's nothing that I hate more 
then if someone passes peacefully in their bed, um, I'm legally obligated absent a DNR um, to, to begin resuscitation efforts, even if there is one. And I had one situation where they showed me the DNR it, or they told me it was coming and the person was a cancer patient. And I called, we work under medical control, which is a physician. I called them up, I said, listen to the situation. They said, don't start, um, you know, and then uh, the brother came in screaming and yelling at me saying, what are you doing? How come you're not doing CPR? I had to call the doctor back and they said, you, you have to start. I mean, the person had passed, but to me, respect for, the, for, for someone who has passed is very high on my priority list. And I mean, CPR, I'm breaking ribs. I'm, I'm yeah. doing things that I'd rather not do. I mean, I, yeah. that's successful it's, outcome. It's not pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's no way to make it sound pretty. It, it's very, it's a very, you know, I, I, I would like to be blessed one day at, at whatever old age God gives me. And, you know, in Judaism, we say until 120, um, I, I don't see too many 110 year olds running around running marathons, but, uh, that's, that's the old expression. Um, right. I, I'd like to be one of those people who are fortunate enough at one point to never need significant care and, you know, and, and just end their life you know, naturally at home, but not many, many people with modern science, they're, they're living, they're living significantly longer and the quality of life is something which, you know, we see quite a bit. Listen, I have a neighbor who died um, at 101 um, last uh, November. I wasn't on that call, but uh, he was at 99 before COVID. He didn't, he didn't have COVID at 99. He was still bicycling around the neighborhood. Wow. His name is Eddie. He was like, I'm like, it's I amazing. can't get on the bicycle. It kills my back. It kills my. And meanwhile, Eddie is on a bicycle that's from the 1940s, and he's just dry riding around with it, waving to people. The kids all knew him in the neighborhood, and um, you know, he he died at 101. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I have, I have, I had a grandmother who lived to almost 102, and th this would have been a perfect. Uh, uh, application for her uh, having having this device and the ability to, you know, share the photos, uh, communicate, uh, for her to be able to reach out, uh, you know, when she when she had the need uh, to and to do it easily. So, um, I guess I want to add um, when it comes to the person's house, it's connect to electricity, connect to Wi-Fi, and you're good to go all the setup, the pictures, everything else, if it's, if it's a family doing it on their own, it's coming directly from the app. If it's the enterprise, the uh, service, uh, some sort of a facility, uh, we're connecting it with them and they're using it. Uh, they could post up a picture of saying, a message is the Mahjong group is starting. They could post up a picture of last year's holiday party saying, hey, the holiday party you know, is gonna be you know, at two o'clock this afternoon, come on down. So th these are the types of things that they're able to do, but we, it really is, in order to make it so simple, it is a lot of backend work to make sure yeah. that, you know, we don't have, um, you know, even, you know, some of our, our, you know, coming later in the summer, uh, our devices are going to, you know, have availability with SIM cards. Um, they probably all have Wi-Fi, but just the ability to only require electricity and not and get over that hump of having to type in a, getting a Wi-Fi password, which usually would require an educated, uh, a, a technical, a technologically educated individual to set it up for them. You know, this is something which uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we we can't we can't fix we can't plug it in for you, but uh, we can send it with data services. Interesting. Um, so I'm. Uh, uh, I have. So you answered my question about the kind of the, the learning curve part in terms of at least the initial setup. Um, as far as the um, uh, family is concerned, would they have the ability to go through that? That's essentially a web portal that you were showing us earlier on the back end, right? So you log into a web page and you have the ability to. Um, you know, adjust things as needed on the setup side. Uh, how much of that can be done with the mobile app? 
Great question. Um, so the family is not collecting data the way a home would. Um, so they're able to um, add other family members, add the pictures, send messages, um, but the, the biometric data does not yet come back to the family app. Um, that is a, you know, the family version is more um, for exclusive, for exclusively at this point for communication and keeping the social interaction with the photos and the messages, you know, you know, you can send a message, you know, if they don't pick up, you can send a message that says, mom, I'll be over in, you know, two hours, thumbs up, you know, something like that, you know, um, something simple. Um, and the messaging is one way because we're, we're working under the assumption that the end user is not going to be comfortable typing on, I, I, my fingers are too big sometimes, even when I put the Wi-Fi password in on an eight inch screen, it's not so simple. Um, for my kids, it's <laughs> right. sure. they're, they're easy like that. But. Right. And, and, and all, all with the thumbs too. Um, I can tell you, my, my son has, the one who's in college, has typed entire essays on his iPhone, sent it to a Google Doc for editing, and then submits it to the teacher with, from the Google Doc. But he could right. type faster. When he started driving, he, he said, the biggest problem with driving to school was that I lost the time to write my essays on the way to school. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Love it. Um, interesting. So um, uh, so with the, um, I'm going to call it the, uh, uh, and you may have a name for it, the, the institutional version of your product. The enterprise you, version, yeah. The enterprise version, thank you. You would have, you would have that web portal, uh, but not so for the family. Correct. correct? It's, all, it's all through the app, gotcha. Um, so in terms of, um, um, you know, caregivers, uh, your enterprise customers, what kind of benefits are they seeing from using your product? Um, so they're getting a benefit in they're able to uh, empower their staff to be more efficient. The workforce is growing younger. Um, and I was at one conference for, um, uh, excuse me, for one second. Um, I want to tell this person, no, sorry for the interruption. They just no asked worries. if they could uh, do a hot fix. <laughs> Uh, my, and I said, you got to give me 10 minutes. Um, so they, um, um, I'm sorry, what was your uh, question again? Just what are the benefits oh, to your right. enterprise customers? Yeah. So they are seeing their staff. It was, we, I was in one CEO forum and one of our partners actually said that people, it, it's not a very high paid um, place to be working. And people will go someplace else if they feel that their jobs are being made easier. So one of the things that they're doing is um, having technology at the, you know, they're expecting it. They don't want sign in books. They don't want, you know, they don't want old fashioned, you know, come in here, punch a time clock. They're ex the, the workforce is growing up in this age of technology. And as the older bosses, we have to empower them with the technology. So we're seeing that. We're seeing the ability to make people, people join this profession and this industry. You know, there's a lot of ways to make a little bit of money. They, if you're choosing this, it's because you're on a path because you, you want to be helpful. So we're helping them be helpful. And you're also able to see which ones, um, from an administrative standpoint, you're able to see which ones are being successful, which ones aren't you're able to help fill your beds by telling the family members, hey, we offer you this advantage. You will be able to connect. You are, you're, you're afraid you're not, you know, it's a really emotionally charged decision to put a loved one in a facility. It, it, oh, yeah. It's one of the hardest decisions that people have to make. I say, you know, we're gonna keep you connected. You know, we're gonna make sure you're there. I mean, I, I visited a long-term care facility um, they had they have hugging booths where you go through these um, mylar um, protective I don't know what they're called basically you could hug through these things um, for COVID safety because they're still they're still locked down um, as you know for you know it's outside the the, the resident get, comes in and sits it almost you know it, it's similar to 
I guess, visiting somebody, I don't want to say like in prison, but they're, I mean, they decorated it with very nice decorations, a lot of Disney stuff. They try to make it happy, but basically, you know, th there's a lot of hoops to jump through for that. Um, and they will, um, you know, that those are some of the major benefits. The data on the highest levels, being able to see, you know, who's using what, who's being, who's going to what groups. The recreational therapist is running umpteen events. She can go or someone on her staff can go ahead and, and push out notifications about the Mahjong group, the bingo group, the trip to the mall, all those different things and make them more flexible. When someone says no, they're not going, but they always go to that. And someone can say, hey, John, you, you, you always come to bingo, you know? So that's, um, that, would, that would be some of the major uh, advantages. Excellent. Um, I'd like to open it up uh, for any questions that anyone in the audience may have uh, for Avi uh, about, about his product. And so if you have anything, feel free to unmute yourself and jump right in. And um, I guess just one, one final question um, regarding some of the, um, uh, the messaging part. Like you mentioned, uh, and I used as an example that you could say, you know, hey, mom, I'm going to be by in 10 minutes to pick you up for to go to dinner or whatever. Um, is um, <clears throat> is there the ability to uh, provide canned mess uh, responses rather? So in other words, you know, mom could tap uh, an OK button that actually tells you OK. The message. Yeah. Um that should be available. Um, I don't know, the messaging is really not used so much by the families. Someone put in the chat, is it available for the public? Can I purchase one for my loved ones today? Um, on a, uh, so Leanne, it is available. Uh, we are working on a relaunch of the product. It's nucleuscareconsumer.com is where you would go uh, to make the purchase. Uh, currently, the device being sold does not have, um, a SIM card availability. Uh, we're working on that in our next sprint. So it would be some, as long as you have Wi-Fi and electricity, electricity usually isn't my issue. <laughs> Sometimes most people have Wi-Fi. Um, they just don't know that they have it in some of these instances, but yes, it is something that is available, um, Leanne, but th thank you for the question. And is, I guess on that note, um, as far as connectivity is concerned, do you have a, like a cellular version of the product as well? So it is coming out soon. We will be available on a, um, you know, with a SIM card. Um, I, I believe it's going to end up being T-Mobile. So if T-Mobile works for you, that'll be great. But what it will do, it will be out of the box that it will work. And then hopefully people will, you know, because of data usage and charges that will be built into the pricing, um, they'll be encouraged to, you know, if Wi-Fi is available, obviously connect it to Wi-Fi, but should the Wi-Fi go out, it'll automatically switch back over to LTE. Um, oh, okay. So, which is important. Uh, again, we don't want the settings page um, in many of the institutions. One of the places you'll see a password is if they go into network settings. Um, Leanne, the, uh, the LTE product probably will be available um, sometime between Memorial Day and July 4th, I would say, just based on the sprints that we're uh, running. So not, not, too, not too far into the future. Yeah, uh, that's pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that we worked on. Um, you know, we did major updates yesterday. Um, when I took over the company uh, back right before COVID, it was only available on our legacy devices, is what we call them. And now we're available on market hardware. We, we will not be molding any more hardware because, um, frankly, the hardware market's commoditized. So uh, we're, we're keeping it strictly software. Um, Leanne, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me. I don't know if my email information is, is up. Uh, um, I'll, let me, I'll just respond back to you with my email address and you can just shoot me an email um, and we'll get someone from the company to, uh, um, and of course I misspelled my email address because I'm uh, yeah, you can go ahead and just email uh, me directly, Leanne, and we could, um, you know, we, we can talk offline about that. 
And that was actually going to be my final question to you is how, what's the best way for people to uh, either reach you or your company? Uh, uh, I'm very, I'm very reachable. You know, we, we haven't grown to the point where I put, you know, gatekeepers in front of me. Um, we do have a, I, I surprise people sometimes, you know, I, I, I am on the contact at Nucleus Care also. And sometimes people vent, you know, we don't, I'll, I'll, I'll we're not perfect. I'll say it. People vent sometimes, and if someone does so in you know a respectful manner, I'll I, I've returned a call on a on a Sunday, and I mean there was one person who uh, was in a hospital where we are, and um, she her child was intubated with COVID, and he's an adult, but he had um, he had Down syndrome, and uh, he had the intellectual age of eleven. Um, <laughs> I like Leanne's comment. I'll only do business with you if you're perfect. <laughs> Don't, I'll give you my wife's number. You can tell her, how, she'll tell you how important <laughs> things. Um, and uh, we were able to, to get her, um, you know, with the auto answer had not been enabled. And within 12 hours, uh, we were able to do that for her. Um, so um, and I, I appreciate that, Leanne. I like your sense of humor. Feel free to unmute yourself if you want to say hello. Right. Uh, you know, by all means. Um, but I don't, I don't know if you're in a noisy environment, then that's why. Um, but I, again, you know, reach out. The company is made up of very, very motivated uh, people to work towards our mission. I work hard because they make me work harder because I see them. I see the emails at two o'clock in the morning. Um, and you know, I, I, I try for them not to do that, but when something happens, we had an instance early this morning where, you know, it's technology, um, it's technology and things happen. And, you know, we had an incident, uh, someone, it was 6.30 their time when they emailed us. And I think by, you know, within two hours they were, you know, reconnected. Um, and we woke people up to, to do it because it was, you know, it's what we do. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. I really appreciate the time. Avi, thank you so much for being on the program today. Uh, I really appreciate you joining us and uh, providing such valuable information uh, to, uh, you know, to my audience, not just the audience who was able to attend with us today, but also, um, you know, the folks who watch on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can find uh, Senior Tech Coffee on YouTube. Please subscribe. Um, uh, the month of May, we've got a couple of uh, events scheduled. Uh, we're going to be looking at a product called Stack Care uh, and uh, discussing that with uh, Natalie Divazé. And then on the 19th uh, of May, we're going to be discussing uh, some digital real estate tools uh, with a gentleman by the name of Bill Nissim. And you can find out more at uh, the address, website address that you see there. Um, you can reach me uh, at uh, the following information that you see here uh, listed, and you can just go directly to primeoflifetech.com and uh, make your way to the contact page there. And I really appreciate uh, you, uh, Avi, again, as well as uh, members of the audience for uh, everyone joining us today. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And uh, uh, look for the recording uh, of this uh, later on uh, uh, today on uh, YouTube. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining, everyone. Take care.